Jared Poland from Nosephoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, I've been using Squarespace for JaredPoland.com for 10 years now, and just last month, I personally built two new sites with Squarespace. One, fund a photographer, and two, BerniePhotoBook.com, and guess what? I don't know coding and I never will. Those sites were super easy to build, edit, and launch all on my own. So head on over to squarespace.com slash photo to get your 14 day free trial. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, DJI is back with yet another drone this time around. It's called the Air 2S. And before you say, but Jared, this is old news. Yeah. It was announced the same day that we released last week's news, thus why it's going in this week. Also, if you're sitting there saying, didn't DJI just put out a new drone? Next up, DJI has announced the FPV drone called the FPV. The answer to that is yes. They're constantly putting out new models and my fear is that they go the way of GoPro. Though GoPro stopped innovating and it seems like DJI continues to innovate. The Air 2S's biggest upgrade is it now adds a one inch sensor, something that GoPro Pro has never done. This 20 megapixel sensor is capable of shooting video up to 5.4K at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second at 4K. You now have the ability to fly for up to 31 minutes, which is entirely too long when you are flying drones because usually I'm bored after five to 10 minutes, but hey, that's just me. Yeah, dude, it's fucking boring as shit. The 2S has four sensors to help you not run into things. There's the up, up, down, down, left, right, and left, right sensors, which will give you 30 extra lives. My favorite new feature is called Master Shots. Simply select your subject and the drone will film while executing 10 different maneuvers in sequence. Basically, it's running preloaded movements, allowing anyone to get that cinematic drone footage. And I kind of think that it's awesome. If you think this drone is for you, get ready to fork over a thousand bucks or for $300 more, you can get the Fly More combo with three batteries, crappy shoulder bag, ND filters, and other accessories. Will I be buying one? No, no I won't. Will I take one for free? Sure, sure I will. Remember when I said if last week's fix gets 10,000 likes, I will cut a hair on next week's fix. Well, it didn't, so Steven has to shave his head. But if it gets 10,000 likes this week, I will once again offer to cut a hair. Next up, Sony has released a lens that is so niche that only 12 people may actually buy it, if that. Whoa! Uh, uh, Introducing uh. the Sony 14mm f1.2 G Master, a $1,600 ultra-wide prime that's light, compact, and sharp as hell. I spent some time in the real world testing this lens out at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Shafuso, the Japanese gardens in Fairmount Park, and in Glass Black's studio. I also decided to compare it to Sigma's 14-24 2.8 and Sony's 12-24 2.8 to see if there's really that big of a difference. The one thing I wasn't able to do is the one thing that this lens is really meant for. Astrophotography. Also, does anyone know any astrophotographers who actually make money and can afford this lens? Dude, I'm gonna check out the stars later. If you said yes, are there more than 12? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, exactly, uh. I didn't think so. I personally don't care about having the ability to go to 1.8 on an ultra wide lens. Now, with that being said, I did a lot of shooting at 1.8 and it was fantastic. The lens is lightning fast on the A1 and will be lightning fast on pretty much any E mount body. There's very little, if any, lens flare, and I was happy with my results. But at the end of the day, I think the majority of the people out there would be better off buying a Sigma 14 to 24 2.8e for less money and to have more versatility. Now, I'm personally going to stick with the Sony 12 to 24 2.8 as my go-to wide angle for now. To check out my full in-depth review of the 14 1.8 and to download sample RAW files, look for the link down below after this fix. Next up, Apple held an event where they announced newly designed iMacs and iPads with M1 processors. I think I like the purple iMac one, but would probably go with the blue one to match my Herman Miller embodied chair. They also announced something that I think is going to be huge for photographers, but first, let's quickly start with the new M1 iMac, and I have it right here. 
Isn't it amazing? It has a neck and it goes boingy boing. That's what she said. It comes in seven colors with matching keyboards and mouses. Mice, mice, exactly. As well as Touch ID that is now built into the keyboard. The iMac finally has a 1080 webcam, but as of now comes in just one size, 24 inches. Personally, I prefer at least 32 inches, but the market Apple's going after probably will be happy with 24. Pricing starts at just $12.99, and this is where the Apple haters leave comments saying, they could have built the most beast Windows machine for less. And guess what? I don't care. I like the Apple ecosystem. All those f***ing shape. I'm going to skip past the new iPad Pros with liquid Retina XDR displays to talk about AirTags. Yes, Apple has finally released AirTags, which as a photographer, I will be buying to hide in all of my camera bags and potentially attach to big ass glass or bodies. <laughs> Basically, AirTags are tracking devices that you will be able to ping or pull up via Find My App. Yes, it's like the tile, except that there's already hundreds of millions of Apple devices in the network to help you find your gear if it goes missing. The battery is said to last up to a year and will be user replaceable. The key will be hiding it properly so someone who borrows borrows your gear, won't be able to locate and toss it out the window, AKA sew it into your bag. Will you be buying some? And finally, Nikon's announced more firmware updates for well, every mirrorless camera that they currently have on the market. Yeah. Are these major updates? No. Will people care about them? No. But hey, it's photo news, so I'm reporting it. To distill it down, the Z6 Space 2 and Z7 Space 2 will get faster AF in low light situations, as well as updated tracking frames for IAF and face detect. On top of that, subject tracking AF has been improved. The Z6 and Z7 will get pretty minor updates and the Z5 will get faster AF in low light situations. Now it is nice to see Nikon continuing to put out firmware updates, but what would be even nicer is... And just focus. Right, I'm just gonna leave it right there. And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.